order, order. Liz Savile Roberts to move the motion. for mandatory CCTV in the UK's equine slaughterhouses and it is a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship Mrs May. Yeah. question is that this house has considered CCTV oh sorry <laughs> I'm very sorry <laughs> I, I, I shall continue, I shall continue. Um, believe me like um, many horse obsessed women I could happily entertain you with an equine monologue for at least an hour and a half but while I'd rather be talking about the brilliant exploits of horses that I've known Nonetheless, the welfare of horses at their end of their lives remains an unavoidable issue requiring much greater scrutiny and action. Sadly, if you keep livestock, sooner or later you'll have to dispose of dead stock. And those of us who care about horses would prefer to convince ourselves that every animal will meet either a natural pain-free death or be euthanized by a vet. The reality, of course, is very different for thousands of horses and ponies. If we are concerned for their welfare, it is our duty not to be blinded by sentimentality, but rather to improve reality as we find it. I know that protecting animal welfare at slaughterhouses is an emotive topic at the best of times, and I am proud that as a matter of policy, Ply Cymru believes that CCTV systems are the best means to monitor and so to protect the welfare of animals and slaughterhouses. Smaller slaughterhouses should be supported to be able to install CCTV, as it should be borne in mind that small slaughterhouses often have welfare advantages in terms of time and distance travelled by animals. Although the use of CCTV in Welsh slaughterhouses falls within the competence of the Welsh Government, the specialised nature and geographical spread of equine slaughterhouses makes this a cross-border issue. Due to the lack of local facilities, horses kept in North Wales may well be taken to slaughter in the north of England. And this is a particularly relevant issue to Wales, where the 2013 mislabelling of red meat scandal resulted in the discovery of horse meat in supermarkets and also resulted in raids in a number of slaughterhouses, including one near Aberystwyth in the constituency next to mine. As with almost any contemporary legislative or regulatory issue, Brexit has also created questions regarding exit equine slaughter and broader animal welfare laws. Minimum standards for the protection of animals at the time of slaughter are currently set out in the 2009 EU regulations. If, and I use if knowingly in this context, one day the government's great repeal do, do, bill, bill does as is promised and transposes all EU law into UK statute, decisions on minimum standards in slaughterhouses will have to be made once again. Making CCTV mandatory in equine slaughterhouses as well as other slaughterhouses must be a top priority. Nowadays, we no longer regard horses as working animals and treat them rather, of course, as companions or pets. So the idea of horse slaughter is something many people feel uncomfortable about. Sending a horse to an abattoir is far less common than it used to be. And there are alternatives to the abattoir for horse owners wishing to provide a compassionate end of life for their animal, such as euthanasia by a vet, taking the horse to an experienced knackerman or to hunt kennels. However, the costs for these options have risen in recent years, making them unaffordable for some horse owners. Euthanasia by a vet and carcass disposal can cost more than £500, while a knackerman may charge around £150. In contrast, an abattoir will pay for the horse, so affordability never has to impact the horse owner's decision. It is important that all horse owners can afford to be able to provide a humane death for their animals. I would, of course, give way. Congratulate her on securing this debate. And would she agree with me that one of the things that holds back the horse owners from sending their horses to an abattoir is their lack of confidence? And that the World Horse Welfare Survey shows that over half of the respondents would consider using an abattoir if CCTV was in place. I am very grateful to the Honourable Lady for raising that point, and we'll go into it in further detail. But I think the fact that people lack confidence in the potential of abattoirs, and also the feeling that they will be criticised by fellow horse owners for using that as a resort, is, 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 in, is in effect a welfare issue in itself. And um, in, in this respect, it may well be causing some horse owners um, to result in, in, the result of it being in delaying euthanasia, and this in itself causing welfare problems and distress. And addressing this is one of the key horse welfare challenges identified in the four-year study into the welfare status of horses in England and Wales. And the results of this research, as mentioned, which was conduct conducted by the University of Bristol and funded by Welsh World Horse Welfare, was published in a report called Horses in Our Hands, launched at Parliament this summer. 
It cited how emotional attachment to the animal played a role in delaying euthanasia, as did negative attitudes to killing, financial considerations and peer pressure. Old, sick and unmanageable horses are too often sold or, or just given away when owners should be taking responsible <coughs> steps to end their horses' lives humanely. And what happens to horses who are sold or given away when they are no longer wanted or useful? Very often they'll be sent to horse sales and markets, passed between owners, shipped from pillar to post, only to end up in the meat trade anyway. And in Wales, the sight of unwanted and worthless ponies filling the pens at markets and shunted from lorry to lorry is depressing. However, the distress caused to these animals is unnecessary. And if the public had greater confidence that horse welfare would be protected at slaughter, perhaps fewer horses might suffer this prolonged misery. According to the Food Standards Agency, the latest public attitudes tracker from May 2016 shows animal welfare as equal third when it comes to concern for our food, alongside salt and behind sugar and food waste. This lack of confidence is especially evident amongst horse owners. A high-profile expose on the practices of a now defunct UK slaughterhouse in 2013 showed an appalling disregard for horse welfare, with horses beaten, stunned in sight of each other, and some appearing to regain consciousness before they were finally killed. These practices were revealed only through covert CCTV footage. Had CCTV been in place with access to the footage given to the authorities like the FC FSA, the proprietor or the regulator could have stopped this malpractice much sooner, and this clearly would have been in everyone's interest, and particularly those horses who were undergoing the experience. Um, thank you. Um, I congratulate the Honourable Lady on obtaining the debate. Uh, is she saying that there is a reluctance within the equine slaughter facilities to put in CCTVs? Because I know in the red meat sector, whilst it's not compulsory, some have voluntarily done it. Is there a reluctance within the slaughter plants to do that? Ms. Savile Roberts. I think the, the issue here is that it is not compulsory, and that particularly in relation to horse behaviour and to the behaviour of horse owners, that it's a particularly pertinent issue. We, will all, we also know that CCTV is not present, it is voluntary, it is not present in every slaughterhouse otherwise, and it appears to have reached a certain point and be going, and be going no further, plateau if you like. So if I, if I could first you and then I will to you. Uh, Excellent speech, but I'm following closely. Would you agree with me that the cost of installing CCTV has fallen rapidly in recent years, and this shouldn't in any way be a barrier to good abattoirs installing it without being required to do so? Yes, Samuel Roberts. And indeed, I understand that many um, larger scale slaughterhouses already have CCTV installed externally, and that it all affects in purpose to then move to include the internal installation as well, would not be prohibitively expensive. I think it is an issue for smaller slaughterhouses, and they need to be supported, because I think we need to support smaller slaughterhouses. I'll give way. Brilliant night. I thank the Honourable Lady for, for giving way. I congratulate her on this debate, and she's been most generous in taking so many interventions. Um, I just wonder what the Honourable Lady thinks, as, as I did, there's also another whole or floor in, in the current arrangement, and that is that in those slaughterhouses where there is CCTV, uh, the owner actually has the option not to allow the uh, FCA to actually see the footage. In fact, it's a voluntary, it's not only just the, the CCTV voluntary, but the access to the footage is also voluntary. Yes, Sarah Roberts. It would indeed seem that if CCTV were to be present that we should be making full use of it, and that that is another aspect, given that CCTV itself is not compulsory, compulsory. Uh, that this too should be mandatory, that there should be access to the, the footage gained through that, through that means. And I think it is, it is, it is important to emphasise that, um, although we're holding this debate today, that does not in itself in any way presume that there is poor treatment in all five of the UK's equine slaughterhouses, all of which, of course, take species other than horses as well. But horse owners have not forgotten that incident from 2013, and uh, a Facebook survey carried out by World Horse Welfare in September provided some interesting insights. And around 90% of more than 900 horse owners who responded did not consider the abattoir as an option for their horse. But 40,000 agreed that horse slaughter should remain an option within the UK as the cost of euthanasia are so high. And more than 70% said that they would not use a slaughterhouse for their own horses because they didn't have confidence that the horse's welfare would be protected through the process and given a humane death. I would, of course, give way. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way um, and for securing this debate today. I'm unsure if members are aware, however, that there are currently no abattoirs in Scotland which are licensed 
for the slaughter of horses. Nonetheless, the wider issue of the welfare of animals at abattoirs is certainly one which is important to many north of the border. And at the SNP conference in autumn, order, a motion order, was actually order. passed. Order, order, order. The lady's making a speech. Could I ask the No, I'm, I'm coming to my question, Chair. Well, it was passed order. calling... Order, could the lady sit down when she's been brought to order? Uh, uh, I'm coming to my question. I'm afraid it's not an adequate response. She's taking too much of the lady's time. Make a brief question, please, yeah. now. Do, does the Honourable Member agree with me that the provision of CCTV is vital in ensuring that animals are protected um, prior to their slaughter? I believe that CCTV protects several Roberts. the animals themselves and also workers in slaughterhouses, and it protects public confidence in the meat that we're producing in our slaughterhouses, and all these are important issues. So we have a real issue in relation to CCTV and public confidence, and there's a concern at present that horse welfare is not protected during the process, perhaps because particularly of the sensitive nature of horses. And there are specific characteristics of, of equines that can make them more vulnerable. They are fight or flight animals, and, and when frightened, they will seek to, f to, free and they, to flee, and they will become quite panicked and aggressive if they are not handled competently. They're sensitive and highly social herd animals, and it's a legal requirement for them not to be killed in sight of other horses. And let us not forget that horses, unlike agricultural livestock, have been bred for hundreds of generations to interact with people, and they have that in, in their behaviour patterns. And it's part, of course, one of the reasons why we love them those of us who keep them. <laughs> there, then, there is the fact, too, that uh, it can be the horse owners themselves who take the horse to slaughter. And that horse may have been a companion to them for many years. Society expects horse owners to feel an emotional attachment with their animals. The horse owner will want, perhaps more than most, a guarantee that the welfare of their horse will be protected at the abattoir. And they will want other horse owners not to judge them for ending their horse's life in this way, which means we need to ensure that the abattoir is and is seen to be a humane end-of-life option. Will CCTV provide such a guarantee on its own? No, of course it will not, as the RSPCA, FSA, the Farm Animal Welfare Council, British Meat Processors Association and many others have said, CCTV is but one of many tools, tools to help safeguard welfare. It should not be seen as a replacement for on-site mon monitoring, but to support it. Official veterinarians work in every slaughterhouse across England and Wales and make regular unannounced checks on live animals at slaughter to ensure their welfare is being safeguarded. The FSA's veterinary, vet, vet, veterinary audit team also checks compliance. However, no one person can monitor the whole slaughter process, from animals held in lairage through to being led to the stun block, block box or the slaughter area through to the actual killing. And CCTV that is in constant operation, placed to cover all live horse areas, such as the unloading, the lairage, and so forth, will uh, provide a record of the entire process and the experience of the animals throughout that process. And this could, as I have mentioned, have great benefits for the slaughterhouse operator, who is responsible, of course, for ensuring the welfare of animals while on the premises. Operators would be able to monitor and assess that their staff are complying with the law. They also have evidence to disprove spurious allegations of malpractice. In this respect, CCTV protects slaughterhouse workers and owners. And furthermore, it can be used for staff training and development. And one European slaughterhouse told World Horse Welfare that CCTV was invaluable for staff training purposes. The most common rebuttal against mandatory CCTV is cost. However, the costs, as Minister George Eustace explained in a debate on the issue last year, were relatively modest. CCTV systems can be purchased for less than £1,000, and many slaughterhouses already have these systems in place to monitor the, ex the exterior of their promises for security reasons, so why not inside as well? And of course, to provide genuine transparency and engender confidence, the footage should be available to authorities. Currently, there is no law in place that requires CCTV footage from slaughterhouses to be shared with either official vets or the FSA, whose role is to monitor welfare at slaughter. For the use of CC to be effective, this, of course, must change. A mandatory CCTV in equine slaughterhouses must be leg legislated for in tandem with a requirement for footage to be made available to those authorities. Only this will truly deliver the transparency that the public needs and expects. So what's the present state of play? At the moment, DEFRA has said they wish to encourage a voluntary approach to installing CCTV. Welsh Government have also indicated that they support the use of CCTVs in slaughterhouses in Wales, but have failed to legislate to make that mandatory. It's clear this approach is not working. The FSA, in their board report of 21st September, 
confirmed that take-up of CCTV had plateaued at 49% in red meat slaughterhouses. Where slaughterhouses have CCTV, it may not be placed in the areas which allow them to monitor horse welfare. We do need a mandatory approach, I would beg. Okay. Way, and no horse lover could possibly disagree with the general thrust of her arguments. Of course, it's right that we should have CCTV where it can be done. However, of course, there are only 5,000 horses a year killed in abattoirs of the 75 or 100,000 who are killed elsewhere. And would there not be a risk that if she was to focus all of her attention on persuading the government to bring in primary legislation, an extremely difficult thing to do, she would by that means be ignoring uh, the horse welfare issues uh, associated with the other 95,000? Let's have a Roberts. I agree with the thrust of his argument, but would also beg that the fact that at present so few horses are, being, are, are travelling through slaughterhouses to the end of their lives, perhaps that is in itself a welfare issue, and that there would be more horses if more horse owners were confident, and that the society, if you like, the horse, the horse keeping society as a whole was more confident that this was an appropriate approach, that the numbers would in turn increase. Um, right, if I could return to this, um, the, said, the present state of play. DEFRA has also said, another DEFRA approach, is that it should be consumer and retailer pressure uh, as the means to encourage the greater use of CCTV as opposed to legislation. And DEFRA cites how most major food rate retailers, including, and I could list them all, the, 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 major, the major food providing supermarkets, now insist upon the use of CCTV in supply chain slaughterhouses. And there are many, of course, insurance schemes such as RSPCA assured. But, and I beg this is, this is pertinent here, this consumer pressure approach will not work for horses because horse meat is rarely sold or eaten in the United Kingdom. Most horse meat which we produce here is of course sold on the continent, mostly to wholesalers, so consumer and retailer pressure is not applicable here. Just to close now, uh, the case for making CCTV mandatory in the UK, UK's equine slaughterhouses, I hope, is clear. The current voluntary approach will not deliver them. Horse owners themselves do not have the confidence that abattoirs will protect horse welfare throughout the process. There is neither transparency nor accountability in the system for horses, just the memory of horrific covert footage from 2013. The losers in this state of affairs are not just the horses, but horse owners, retailers and the general public all suffer from the negative consequence of bad practice and low confidence in equine slaughterhouses. I therefore would urge the Minister to do all that he can to provide a system that ensures high standards of welfare and instills greater confidence in the sector by exploring a mandatory requirement for CCTV in equine slaughterhouses.